Hey, we're at Lester Dunkley's famous machine shop in Brattleboro, and sitting right across from me is Lester. Lester, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Good. Well, you said you were kind enough to maybe let me take a little tour of your shop. I think a lot of people know about you and maybe have never been in here, so um, maybe we can start if you don't mind. I see behind you there's a lot of um, nuts and bolts, and you were telling me how they're graded. Can we just take a walk back there and sure. um, you can tell me, because yeah. most people think a nut and a bolt is just a nut and a bolt, but there's quite a bit of difference, I think. Show you the difference between the All right. different grades of bolts. Right here, you have a, a bolt that doesn't have any markings on it whatsoever. It's a it's a soft one. And this right here is a medium grade. This is American thread too, by the way. Uh, it has three lines on it. Okay. And the uh, three lines uh, designate the hardness of the bolt. That's a medium grade bolt. And this one right here is a what they call a grade eight bolt. It's actually a, a, a better than grade eight bolt. It's got six radial lines and has a few dots in between that. Mm. So that, that's a um, that's a Lawson bolt, which has got a better than a grade eight quality to it. And that's the way the the uh, American system works. And they. Was, your, there's another system besides the American yeah, system. Yeah, the, the metric system. Oh is, yeah. Okay. So you, has a different type of system to, to uh, designate the hardness. And you get the uh, regular nuts are like this, and you can get um, different hardnesses of your nuts too. You get this soft and in a medium grade and grade five, and you have a grade eight nut also. So, and why do people buy the different hardnesses? Is it the stress of the workload that these pieces have yeah, to hold it, together? Yeah, it makes a difference when you're dealing with heavy machinery like uh, construction equipment. That'd be you'd usually think about using a, a grade eight bolt because okay. it's a, there's a lot of stress on it, and uh, you, um, your automotive you use grade eight and grade five both, and you have to remember that. Uh, Generally speaking, the harder the bolt, the more expensive they are. Yeah, I'm are. just curious now. Yeah, and, and, what and, what are some of the prices like for the same size bolt? Like you mentioned, the grade eight, the grade five, the grade three. What would approximately the price difference your, be? Your uh, between your your um, getting so that the grade the soft ones in the grade five are getting uh, there's not much difference in the price anymore. There used to be a difference now, that, but there is a your grade eight bolts can be twice mm. as expensive as your grade five. Okay. And when you have a lock nuts, that go on there. Right. I mean, that's just a self lock nut. You have different hardnesses than those, too. Right. So. Okay.
us, they wanted something anyway. You know? mm -hmm. to another room here and I'm following Lester he's got all kinds of stuff in here all kinds of machines I saw him bending tubes and cutting tubes this morning that's probably easy stuff for him so you want to tell me about yeah. anything here? Why don't we um, start out with this old press here? All right. This press is a. Um, this came into Brattleboro. Uh, I'm guessing back in the nine, um, in the teens. I mean, nineteen teens. Not right. The, not, not the twenty teens. Wow. And it was. Uh, first came in and was in a automotive shop at the time when they were pressing solid rubber tires on trucks. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah, they yeah. They didn't have inflated yeah. tires. They had solid rubber. And much like the way your, a lot of your forklift tires are done the same way. Right. And and we've been using it as to press um, tow motor tires for quite a while. So if it was that old, how did they power it? I mean, was this manual? Was, did was, you have was, to crank it? it? No, this this was always been uh, electric motor powered. Okay. But it's a belt drive system. Oh and yeah. This whole system right here is a is a electric motor drive, and uh, um, this um, press is is. I'd say the rating number is about 125 tons. But I love that. And, uh, just wait a minute here. We'll, we'll fire it up a little bit. And, All right. I'm... And, uh, the motor for this is uh, I need a big beam up here to seal it. Uh, All right. How did you get it up there? <laughs> All right, don't tell me. It may be a long. It may be a long story. I think I've only seen that motor taken down about once in my life. That really, that's pretty good. And it so runs on uh, 550 volts. It's about a seven and a half horsepower. Wow. And uh, when you guys are going along and power the main shaft, and then if you want to. The press. Another change to the belt over. Wait, wait. Now, you just move that. You slid the belt over. What is it like? Running on hydraulic now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that you switched it over, is that like hydraulic? It's pumping hydraulic? Hydraulic pump right there. What's happening right there? Well, it just, it's pumping oil. All right. And you got this, this here. valve right here. Tighten that up. If you wait long enough, you can see this thing. Start to move? The table goes up. <laughs> See the, see the, it's starting to move up. Oh yeah, I can see that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's the way the whole system works. It's just a positive displaced piston here, and displacing a little bit of oil to go into a big cylinder that's right. 10, 10 inches in diameter. If it moves that slow, it's got to have a lot of pressure behind yeah, it. Right. That's cool. And it's, and it's, uh, uh, 
What is this machine, and what are you going to do right now? Okay. This Go ahead. This is what you call a hydraulic iron worker. Okay. And it's made to uh, um, cut sheer steel. <clears throat> and um, what is sheer steel? Like a plate or something? Take a take a plate. Oh, all right. A plate like that. You notice how long it is? It's about 10 inches long here. So where's it going to cut? Over there or over here? This is a shear blade right here. All right. Come right down and cut it off. Yeah, wait. Can I see it from this side? Yep. Where'd you put it in? Put it right in here. All right. right, okay. So you're going to cut this? Cut that right off. Alright. Oh wow, look at that. That's all, that's all. I thought it was a saw, it's just like... Yeah. Oof. It's a little bit faster than saw. Yeah. And I'll take that. Uh, Probably cleaner too. Well, it, it does sort of, uh, can deform the, the, the edge of it sometimes. And, it, and uh, capacity is, it'll take a one inch thick one Six inch. inch wide piece of steel. Oh my god. And and sheared off just like that. What what you just saw. The shear, that's what I was yep. the word I was thinking of. So are you gonna punch a hole in that now? <coughs> Alright, let's do that. Got an eight inch punch in there, so it's gonna make an inch and eight hole. It's gonna be a little bit noisy. Whoa! Got a hole. Wow, look at that. And one just like... Whoa! Whoa! Yep. It's like a Halloween mask now. Right, right. Now, it's about a Halloween mask. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And the nice thing about it is, with a punch, you can you can uh, get different types of punches. You can have a square hole, or you can have a really? oblong hole. So you can uh, anything you need, it can do. Almost right? anything you need. Know, with this, the capacity of this this machine will will take a punch of one inch hole through half inch thick steel. Oh my God! But now, how old is this machine? This machine is, right now is. Uh, um, 30, a little over 30 years old. Oh my God. 32 years old, I guess it is. Yeah. All right. All right, Lester, thanks for the tour. Okay. And it's Friday. You have a good weekend. I hope too. And I'll come back and pick up my Halloween mask later if that's okay. All right, take it's care. Later. You're a good guy. I yeah. like you, Lester. Take care. Yep. All right.